1948 was, of course, a traumatic uh, watershed in, in the life of the Palestinian people and, of course, of the um, whole Middle East, the whole Arab world. And for Palestinians in particular, uh, there was the need to put on record wh what happened and how it happened and to whom it happened and by whom what happened, happened, and um, and I chose this period from the last decades of the Ottoman Empire to 15th of May 1948, which is the end of the British Mandate, and that was very deliberate. I stopped there, I stopped on the 15th of May 1948. Um, the book, as you know, is divided into five sections. One of the five, the first, deals with the Ottoman period. And the reason for including that is, is very obvious, is that it's the beginning of the Zionist uh, uh, colonization and immigration into Palestine. And then, of course, the ne next four deal entirely with the British mandate, from the beginning to the end, and stops at the end of the British mandate. And that, again, is deliberate. And it's deliberate because Zionism and Israel would, um, Israel itself would not be in existence, would not be in existence, but for Britain. British imperial power is what um, uh, established the infrastructure of the Jewish state of Israel, despite the resistance of the indigenous population, which was the vast, vast majority. Um, it is um, British imperial might that covered the uh, and protected the Im immigration into Palestine of the Jews from mostly Eastern Europe. So that was the crucial period in, in, in which Israel was established. The question that I kept uh, trying to th think through um, was how best to present a story that is as complex, as tragic, as uh, horrific, as uh, also epic and, and painful. The actual format um, it was not easy to uh, conceive it, and, and it wasn't conceived overnight. It took actually years of reflection of how do you best do this? Uh, what are the components of something that is uh, designed to fulfill this purpose? There obviously has to be a text. And then there would be visual aids. And remember, this is in the pre-digital age, you see. So the obvious things was maps, demographic maps, maps tracing the growth of the settlements from zero to what, it, uh, what happened at the end, um, photographs. Um, so there'd be text, so it's a mixture of texts, photographs, and maps. As far as the photographs are concerned, you come to the big, big issue of first, where do you get them from? And then the question of identification. If it's individuals, who are they? When was the meeting? Where was it? What was the occasion? And that's not easy. I mean, unless these things are at the back of the photographs, uh, written by whoever took that photograph, trying to figure this out. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years later, believe me, is, is not a picnic, not a picnic. We were lucky to have access uh, to um, some leading Palestinian photographers and, and collectors. For example, Khalil Rad. Khalil Rad was a leading, perhaps the leading Palestinian photographer um, in the late um, Ottoman and um, the mandate period, almost to the end of the mandate. And you wouldn't believe that, I mean, it's kind of a windfall 
the daughter of Khalil came to the institute one day and said she wanted to deposit her father's collection of photographs in our library. It's, I couldn't believe my ears. Uh, so th that was one major, major, major source. Um, another major source was the Palestinian official sources. For example, I had access to the f photographic uh, collection of Hajj Amin Husseini, the Mufti. I had, despite the great disparity in age between the two of us, he took kind, kindly to me and, and he encouraged me to, and gave me access to his photographs. So that helped a lot. Um, the PLO uh, um, archives, I tapped. And I tapped a series of friends, family friends, uh, family members and friends, you know, net, network, who, um, and then of course foreign sources, um, basically li Library of Congress, the Imperial War Museum in London, and a very important collection of uh, Palestinian photographs by a Swedish family that had uh, settled in Jerusalem, the Matson family. And the, f the uh, old boy, the old Matson, the uh, head of the family, was a professional photographer. And he actually deposited these photographs in the Library of Congress. So I had access to, to those too. I mean, one of the purposes of this book is to refute the Zionist uh, claim, which to, the, which to this day is being perpetuated, that uh, this was a desert and that they made it bloom. And this is absolutely not true. It's simply not true. If you look at the demographic maps which we have in the, um, in the book, um, you will realize that the Jewish population is extremely thin on the ground, except in three cities, uh, uh, the all-Jewish all city of Tel Aviv and the mixed cities of Haifa and Jerusalem. Otherwise, they're extremely th thin on the ground. And one of the um, uh, main um, uh, tropes, themes of, of the book was the very active agricultural uh, rural p p population. The Palestinian rural population was healthy, vigorous, very anxious to improve themselves up, lift themselves up by the boot, and, um, and um, they invested a lot in education. You'd be surprised how much they invested in, in, in education. They would give the, la the land free for the government to build uh, schools, and then they would actually contribute labor and themselves build the school stone by stone um, on a volunteer basis. Well, th this bo book, it came out in 1984, 84. It was printed in Boston. Um, there have been, I think, four editions since then. It's been translated into French and Arabic. It's gone into several editions in, in Arabic. The um, uh, digital edition will give, I mean, the obvious thing, I mean, it'll give, it'll give access to a much, much wider audience than, than the printed edition. And that, of course, would be very welcome and very important uh, from the educational point of view and from the political point of view and from the point of view of understanding the Palestine problem. Uh, at this very, very, very critical stage in its development. I would say the Before Diaspora is a very useful introduction to the history of Palestine, particularly to how this problem came about. Um, uh, it's not, um, it, it's not technical, it's not academic, it has visual aids, photographs, maps, the captions are short and to the point, and the text is, is also, I think, you know, uh, is not long-winded, uh, e economical, um, and the chronology is very useful too. And again, the chronology is 
worded in, in very short uh, uh, two or three liners. So I, I, I hate to blow my uh, trumpet, but I, I, d I really don't think there are many books, uh, introductory books, that can compete with it.